Live from Innovation Park on the campus of Penn State University, this is PSN News. It's Tuesday, October 13th. Tonight, we'll tell you all you need to know about the wellness days Penn State has implemented into the spring 2021 semester, as well as a suspension of the Sigma Tau Gamma fraternity. We also have an update on the upcoming presidential debate, as well as your entertainment, sports, and weather. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Claire Vokey. And I'm Carly Knowlton. Penn State classes of 2020 and 2021 will be represented in Beaver Stadium this upcoming season. Penn State Line Ambassadors will hold a banner containing the names of 2021 graduates and soon-to-be graduates in the S-Zone area of the stadium. The banner will include 2020 spring graduates and an email will be sent to 2021 graduates as well as students graduating in December 2020 on how to register. The Sigma Tau Gamma fraternity is facing suspensions from the university through the end of 2024 due to alleged hazing. The suspension came after a joint investigation by Penn State's Office of Student Conduct and National Headquarters of Sigma Tau Gamma. Penn State has received allegations of hazing during the new member education process. Other allegations, such as distribu distributing alcohol to minors and violating the university's recruiting regulations, were also listed as reasons which led to the suspension. Sigma Tau Gamma has lost all privileges as a registered student organization. Penn State is creating wellness days for the upcoming semester after canceling spring break. During wellness days, classes will not be held and programs will be delivered to support students and faculty. President Eric J. Barron said, quote, our community is dealing with addressed stressors, added stressors, and from COVID-19 and the addition of wellness days will provide a break from course instruction and offer additional programming to support instructors, students, and staff." End quote. The Belisario College of Communications has been holding weekly webinars featuring highly profiled people in journalism. This week, the college hosted husband and wife, Jean Demby and Kanaz Amaria, who co-host the NPR podcast, Code Switch, a podcast about race and identity. PSN News field reporter Kaylin Green has the story. Since the start of September, the Belisario College of Communications has been hosting various Zoom webinars entitled Journalism Speaks. This week, Penn State featured the married couple Jean Demby and Kynez Amara, who both talked about race issues in journalism. Amara is the visual editor for the website Vox. There's work to do and there's interesting work to do and that you can leave something behind. I think there's a lot of ways to tell stories and places to do really interesting work. And I think that will only sort of, uh, there'll be more places. And I've always wanted to do this and I'm, and I'm going to, you know, stay as long as I can. We also heard from Jean Danby, who is the co-host of popular NPR radio show, Code Switch. Talking about being, you know, the voice of America, capturing the voice of America has been fighting to sort of undo the institutional whiteness that's been baked into it from the beginning for, I guess, 50 years now. And the numbers don't move, right? The numbers for all NPR sort of, it's, I, I think, really good faith attempts in a lot of cases, attempts to make both the newsroom more diverse and to diversify the, uh, attempts to diversify the audience, that hasn't really happened. Shelby Lincoln attended the webinar and is also a fan of Demby's show. There's definitely a need for having more black journalists, having more minorities in journal, in, in just in media in general. Um, so just hearing what they had to say gave me a lot of hope um, and a lot more assurance that I'm on the right path and that I can definitely help others with, you know, just mentoring them in their walks with journalism. With many more speeches to come, we can't wait to see what the College of Calm will do next. Reporting for PSN News, I'm Kaylin Green. The Penn State All Sports Museum will remain closed, according to the announcement on Twitter this past Friday. There are two virtual gallery opportunities available, which include a 360-degree tour of the main gallery and the special, special exhibition. The museum's social media accounts will not be responding to comments until further notice. A tweet from the museum said, quote, 
We wish all of our visitors, friends, colleagues, and volunteers a wonderful and safe remainder of 2020, and we will be eager to welcome you in 2021. Stay tuned because after the break, Colton Pesluski will bring you the latest in entertainment. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Colton Pesluski with your entertainment update. The Center of Performing Arts is hosting retro jazz singer and violinist Emma Line for a virtual concert over Zoom. Accompanied by guitarist Ryan Mondak, this will be Emma Line's first performance with the CPA. She was the only female jazz major at the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. Social media has been a crucial part of her musical career so far, having around 183,000 followers on Instagram alone. Her YouTube channel has around 40,200 subscribers and is where Emmeline and Mondak post their music videos, which are reminiscent of the 1950s. You can visit the University Center of Performing Arts website to learn more about attending. The Andrew W. Mellon Foundation has awarded Penn State's College of Arts and Architecture's Department of Art History $225 thousand dollars. This money will be used to host the Sawyer Seminar. The seminar is called Transmission, Containment, Transformation, a comparative approach to architecture and contagion in early modern cities. The seminar contains many activities like workshops, exhibitions, lectures, and performances, all of which will focus on how architecture changes due to physical, social, and cultural threats. Finally, the seminar will explore how COVID-19 has affected the environment. The seminar will take place sometime during the 2021-2022 school year. Last Sunday, Penn State's SPA hosted an event with YouTube sensation David Dobrik. The event that was originally supposed to be in person in March was rescheduled to be over Zoom. David Dobrik talked about life as a YouTuber and was able to give advice to students. PSN News field reporter Katie Park has the story. I'm Katie Park from Penn State Network News. We're going to take a look at the recent Q&A with YouTube sensation David Dobrik. Penn State's Student Programming Association hosted a Q&A with YouTube star and comedian David Dobrik last Monday. Right now I'm standing in front of the Hub Robinson Center, where the Q&A would have been held in person this year. But fans still had the opportunity to get to know David virtually. David was supposed to come in person this year to Penn State, but because of COVID-19, the event was held over Zoom. Fans like Penn State student Krista Kushnerick still had the chance to ask him fun questions about his future video content, meet and greets, contests, and more. Probably one of my favorite questions was if he was going to come to a football game because I wanted him to come because that would be so fun. And if he was going to come back here because I really wanted to see him in person. Fans slept overnight at the Hub to get tickets to see David, where he was originally supposed to come. So last year... Uh, me and my two friends, we wanted tickets to go see him, and we went the second day thinking it would be, like, easier, so we slept in the hub overnight because we really wanted to see him. Yeah, we went at, like, 10 p.m., slept in the hub, and we did get tickets. We were, like, the second group in line, but... It didn't happen in person, but it's still fine. We saw him over Zoom. SPA has more special events coming up featuring famous stars like Noah Cyrus. They have some good people who are coming in this semester. Like, I know Noah Cyrus is coming and a few other, like, famous, really famous people, which is, like, cool to meet and, like, see, even though it's over Zoom. But, like, it's so cool that they can get them to come. I'm Katie Park from Penn State Network News. Tom Parker, lead singer of the British-Irish boy band The Wanted, has terminal brain cancer. The 32-year-old announced his diagnosis over social media on Monday. After Parker suffered two seizures over the summer, he underwent an MRI test, which then confirmed he has stage 4 glioblastoma. Parker states that he will be undergoing chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and that he doesn't want anyone's sadness but love and positivity as his family enters this trying time. Parker and his wife, Kelsey Hardwick, announced earlier this year that they are expecting their second child. That was your entertainment update. Stay tuned because after the break, Kelly Warner will bring you the latest from the world of sports. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Kelly Warner with your sports update. The kickoff date and time is set for Penn State's season opener. The Nittany Lions will open against Indiana at Memorial Stadium at, at 3.30 on October 24th and the game will be televised on FS1. Penn State leads the all-time series with Indiana 21-1, with only one loss coming in Bloomington under Bill O'Brien in 2013. The Lions have won six straight in the series since then, including a 34-27 victory at Beaver Stadium last season. 
Penn State's athletic director Sandy Barber was named one of the Sports Illustrated's most powerful women in sports. Barber was listed as one of four female athletic directors at Power 5 schools right now. The other three included were University of Washington's Jennifer Cohen, Pittsburgh's Heather Cohen, and Virginia's Carla Williams. During Barber's tenure at Penn State, the university's athletics program have captured 29 Big Ten championships and several NCAA titles, while also setting an average GPA of 3.17 in 2019. Oakland Athletics executive Billy Bean is slated to leave the organization and is focusing on ventures outside the MLB. Bean is currently the co-chair of Red Ball Acquisition Corp., which is set to merge with Fenway Sports Group. Bean will partner with Red Sox owner John Henry in the deal. Bean also recently purchased a stake in a Dutch soccer club on October 9th. Bean is notable for his part in kicking off the modern analytic era in baseball, which inspired the book and then movie Moneyball. That was your sports update this week. Our interview anchor Bernadette Bertina was able to sit down with Andrew Mader, the president of Lion Ambassadors to talk about the organization and what their role is at Penn State and how they work with the Alumni Association. Take a look. Lion Ambassadors, the Penn State Student Alumni Corps, has been communicating the university's history, personality, and traditions to students, alumni, and friends through tours and projects for almost 40 years. Many recognizable campus-wide events, like Be Apart from the Start, Guard the Lion Shrine, and the famous student section S-Zone at home football games are organized by the Lion Ambassadors. Acting as a liaison between the student body and the Alumni Association, they are a staple of campus culture. Any student can apply to become a Lion Ambassador, and today we are joined by Senior Finance Major and President of Lion Ambassadors, Andy Mater. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so to start, can you tell us a little bit more about Line Ambassadors, who you guys are and what you do? Absolutely, yes. So Line Ambassadors is an organization that is housed under the Alumni Association. We're an affiliate group with them. Um, and you may have seen us give, may see us on campus, um, you know, giving tours to prospective and accepted students. Uh, maybe you've come to some of our projects like Be Apart From The Start, um, University-wide Senior Send-Off. Um, and then we, just generally host special events or help um, you know work at these type of events for the alumni association so there's a lot of different opportunities for line ambassadors to get involved um, in spreading the university's message to both future students and past students and also you know everyone who's a current student on campus um, or throughout the entire commonwealth throughout world campus as well how can you apply to be a line ambassador yes so we have um, an application posted on our website right now lineambassadors.com it, it asks a few personal questions, just basic information, it has a few kind of like essay questions that ask about your Penn State experience and a few other things. Um, it's a simple application that's due at the end of the fall semester and is supplemented by an interview in the spring. Um, because of the current situation with COVID-19, how are Lion Ambassadors responding to the pandemic? Are you guys still giving tours, still trying to do some kind of projects? Yes, absolutely. I mean, as, as everyone is, we're all adjusting to this. And I think Lion Ambassadors has done a phenomenal job in doing that. Um, we immediately rolled out a plan in April, uh, Zoom with the Lion Ambassador to help high school students who wouldn't be able to visit their campus before applying or accepting um, admissions. And that is really transformed into a, a university-wide um, program rolled out by the Office of Admissions. Uh, through like different panels, lunch and learns, and virtual tours. So really trying to give high school students that same experience that they missed out on and not being able to, you know, visit campus. And then with some of our projects, uh, we've quickly adapted to do a lot of virtual events. So I think one of our most well-known projects is Be Apart From The Start, which is a little pep rally for freshmen um, the night before their first day of classes. And this year, instead of gathering at Rec Hall, because, you know, there's so many people that go into that, we instead did a live stream event um, showcasing different organizations on campus. And I think the great thing about that project is that we were able to reach 
all students at all different Commonwealth campuses, world campus, everything like that. So it wasn't just exclusive to University Park students. It really was for all freshmen or all first year students at Penn State. <laughs> guys do a lot for the Penn State community and for Penn State students. Um, is there anything that uh, line ambassadors have been working on recently, even just within the organization, some new and exciting things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, generating the same excitement for the organization, for the work we do is definitely challenging. It's challenging to do year to year um, because the turnover in our organization is quick. Um, you can only jo join as sophomore or junior and it's very quickly, you know, people end up graduating. And so, um, you know, finding, way, finding ways to engage people online has definitely been the, the newest thing that we're working on. And um, I think for anyone who's applying now and might think like, you know, how can I be a tour guide when you can't give an in-person tour? Um, we are doing everything we can to be able to provide that same experience, even though it looks different, um, just trying to replicate the excitement of being a new member, the excitement of giving your first tour or planning a project. Uh, what is one thing that you want students to know about line ambassadors? So I think one thing that, or I guess, I don't know if I could say, I, the two main things popped in my head is, one, you have a ton of support from the Alumni Association and they're really the vehicle that allows line ambassadors to do um, you know, to pursue their interests and use it, use line ambassadors as the way to get there. Right? And one thing that I think about is um, last year we had a member, Faith Hatcher. She was really um, passionate about um, mental health um, and making sure that students are comfortable with where they are on campus and um, kind of their mental state. And she was able to bring in a speaker, um, Dennis Gillen, or I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, but he was a phenomenal speaker, came into the hints. And it was open to all students, but Line of Asters was pretty much the vehicle that she was able to accomplish that through. Um, and so I think that brings together two great things is you can, you can bring together all these different interests, passions, backgrounds, majors, whatever it is, and use the Line of Asters and the Alumni Association who gives tons of support to be able to pursue different events and, and things like that. I see Line of Asters as a way to give back to the community of Penn State. I feel as though I am making a positive impact for the current and future students through service, tradition, excellence, and pride. All right, thanks, Andy, and thank you so much for all the work that you and Line Ambassadors do for the school. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this opportunity. From the students of Penn State Meteorology, here is your Penn State Campus Weather Service forecast. Hello, I'm Penn State student meteorologist Jimmy Wendelak here with your PSN weather forecast. Now let's start off by taking a look at the weather headlines for the upcoming week. Now after the rain that we had on Monday and Tuesday, we are going to see sunny skies for the days on Wednesday and Thursday with quite pleasant temperatures. But Thursday night into the day on Friday, we are going to see some showers moving from the west. And then by the time we get to the weekend, we clear out again with some more seasonal temperatures to end the week. Now taking a look at the future satellite and radar here in the state of Pennsylvania, we are clear throughout the day on Wednesday, even by the time we get to Wednesday evening, still mostly clear across the state. You do start to see some clouds move into the northwestern portion of the state, so maybe some overcast skies in Erie and Bradford by the time you're hanging out for dinner tomorrow. Overnight on Wednesday, clouds clear again through the entire state, so we are clear corner to corner. But if you look out west, out by Chicago, Omaha, St. Louis, you're beginning to see that band of rain develop. This is early Thursday morning at around 3 a.m. Now, over the rest of early Thursday morning and the day on Thursday, 
You can see that band of rain work its way west to east as it approaches Pennsylvania. Now this is around 10 o'clock Thursday night. You begin to see that rain really start to affect western portion of the state. Now that rain will linger around for the entire state late on Thursday into the day on Friday, but clearing out by the time we get to Friday evening. So for the day tomorrow, expect a high temperature of 69 degrees with winds coming out of the west at around 5 miles per hour. And now taking a look at the seven-day forecast for here in the State College area. Those sunny skies on Wednesday and Thursday with temperatures up around 70 degrees. Showers return Thursday night into Friday with a big drop-off in temperatures. We drop back down into the 50s. Sun returns on Saturday and Sunday and even extending into Monday with temperatures more seasonable for this time of year, around 60 degrees, before a few showers return for the day on Tuesday. From the Penn State Campus Weather Service, I'm student meteorologist Jimmy Wendelak. Have a great day. According to President Trump's physician, he is currently not at risk for spreading the COVID-19 virus. While Dr. Sean Conley says that he will monitor Trump continuously, he also said, quote, Now at day 10 from symptom onset, fever-free for well over 24 hours and all symptoms improved, the assortment of advanced diagnostic tests obtained reveal there is no longer evidence of actively replicating virus, end quote. Trump is now back on his campaign trail. Hurricane Delta leaves severe damage across Louisiana after the hurricane ripped through the state on Friday. Uprooted trees crash onto roofs, debris and trash still piled up from the last storm. Power lines were torn down and there was flooding. Nick Hunter, the mayor of Lake Charles said, quote, to go through what we went through six weeks ago and have another punch in the gut like we received last night, is just unimaginable, end quote. Meteorologists warned of flash floods and tornadoes as the storm carried heavy rain and winds. As of Saturday morning, there were 9,411 Louisiana residents in shelters. In some areas, there were 15 inches of rain, and more than 600,000 people were without power in Louisiana, Texas, and Mississippi. The former police officer charged in the murder of George Floyd is now free after being released on a $1 million bond. Derek Chauvin was released from Hennepin County Jail last Wednesday. Minneapolis Governor Tim Waltz said he activated the National Guard as a precautionary measure in the event of protests. The second presidential debate scheduled for October 15th is now officially canceled. The decision was made after it was announced that the debate would be taken virtually due to President Trump's COVID-19 case. Trump said he would not participate if it was held virtually. The third debate is still scheduled for October 22nd in Nashville, Tennessee. And that's all for tonight on PSN News. Be sure to check us out on Twitter and Facebook at PSN News, on Instagram at Penn State Network News, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash PSN News. Have a good night and stay safe, Penn State.